Gohan and Cell's EZAs are coming, and with them comes a banner. But should you summon? How's it everybody, Celtic Link here, we're back for another Dokkan Battle video. In today's video, we are talking about whether or not you should summon on the EZA banners for the LR AGL Gohan and the LR Int Cells Extreme C Dokkan Festival banners. These banners will be dropping at around 8.30pm uh, Hawaii Standard Time, so in about eight and a half hours from the time that this video drops. Um, now, with these um, LR EZAs, as always, we do get a banner that goes with them, and many of you have been asking if it's worth your stones to summon, so I'm here to give you my thoughts on whether or not I think you should. Now, Extreme Z banners tend to have three units on them, and as of right now, we don't exactly know who the third unit on each of the banners are. However, Gohan's on just the two looks pretty darn spicy. That future Gohan is still really good upon Easy A. The SDR cell that comes with the incel, maybe not so much. Whoever the third unit is on either banner, I don't think is going to make much difference, because if you are summoning on this banner, you're looking most Mostly at the Gohan and the Cell. So, as always, when we determine whether or not we summon for a unit, we look at several different factors. One, we look at the units themselves. Then, we look at banners to come, and then we look at any other possible extenuating circumstances. So, let's go ahead, let's jump over, let's take a look at the Gohan first, right? So, let's look at his base form here. So, in base, he's a Kamehameha, category key 3, HP attack and defense 180, super AGL, key 3, HP be attack and defense 130 percent he is attack and defense 150 percent um he gets key two additional attack and defense 20 percent at the start of each turn up to eight and attack and defense up to 80 percent he guards all attacks with a high chance of launching an additional super attack if you are 58 percent or more hp he has a high chance of performing a critical hit whenever there is an androids category enemy he has an active skill condition that can transform into Super Saiyan 2 when you are 58% or less with an Android 16 on the team, or when 58% or less with an existing Androids category ally or enemy starting from the 5th turn from the start of battle. His 12 key super raises defense enemy infinitely and lowers enemy attack. His 18 key raises defense infinitely and causes major colossal damage while greatly lowering enemies attack. So all in all in base form he's really good. He is guarding as long as you're keeping your health up and building his defense stacking it infinitely as well as his base build up to 80%. Now his active skill condition while it hasn't really changed is significantly easier than it was before to run. Now whether you're running him as leader at uh, the 180 Kamehameha, because he has a sub-lead for Super AGL, you could actually run the Gamma 2 on his team and be able to transform him. Or if you're fighting any of the Cell Max boss events, you can just fall below 58% or less. The thing that makes him nice is because of that 58%, his best partner is actually the LR Bird Coup. So if you've got the LR Bird Coup, you've got this guy's best partner, and basically both of them will be guarding up until you fall below this 58% threshold. Once you do, not only can you transform this guy and get some massive damage out, Berku will also revive if you should die, so it's actually a pretty insane combo, the two of them together. Once he transforms, he does become a nuker. Let's see, where's the transformation? Here it is. He does become a nuker on his transformation condition. Um, he basically is changing these spheres to AGL and changing uh, rainbow orbs as well, getting 20% on attack and 10% defense per key sphere obtained, and doing extra damage and launching extra attacks when you have that Super Saiyan Goku next to him. So he is insanely powerful. He will literally obliterate whatever thing, whatever boss is in front of him. Like, not a single red zone boss is standing up to a full power Gohan, uh, just so you know. Um, Cell, um, like the Gohan, is also extremely powerful, right? If we go and check his base form here. The, he is an Android Cell Socket, Category Key 4, HP Attack Defense 180, and Extreme Int for Key 3, HP Attack Defense 180. 
30. He's getting attack and defense 20%. He's raising uh, defense by 120. He gets more defense based on uh, the HP. He also has an additional key to an attack 30 per existing enemy. He also has an additional attack defense 50% when performing a super attack. He has a high chance of launching an additional attack and evolves when conditions are met. He raises defense for one turn on his 12 key and greatly raises attack for one turn on his 18 key. If you should fall below 40% HP, he will then transform into Perfect Cell, where he then becomes, I don't want to call this a nuking passive, but it's kind of like a semi-nuker, right? He gets 30% with 4 keysters obtained um, attack and defense, he gets 40 with 6, and he gets 50 with 8. He also gets an additional attack 100 and a high chance for a critical hit on his active skill turn or when key is 24. He does get damage reduction like the Kid Goku per key sphere obtained, so he can actually be kind of defensive. The thing that makes him nice is if you get him fully built up, um, if you are launching the active skill um, or getting 24 key, you're getting your 8 key spheres, the guy can actually tank pretty well, right? Um, so he can act as a pseudo slot 1 unit on the AGL cells team. He's not the best, but he can work. Both of these guys are insanely powerful, and like I said, very few enemies in the game, even into the 8th anniversary, are standing up to these two at max power. So the question is, if you had neither, could you summon on their banner? Well, I'm going to say first, if you've got the coins, go for the coins. That's your better option um, if you didn't have them. If you've got coins, check out my video on the coins and whether or not you should use them or if you should save for someone else. But that would be my primary recommendation before you summon. Now, if coins aren't an issue for, or if coins are an issue for you, you're low on them but you're still worried about these guys. Um, I would say the units themselves do lend themselves to being worth a summon. They are just that good. However, they aren't the only factor we need to consider. We need to consider what's coming forward. We already have confirmed uh, from the Dokkan Wiki here from the latest data download that the Tech Bardock is coming. So the Tech Bardock's banner doesn't have too many crazy units on it, um, basically the Bardock and the Torah. So unless Bardock was somebody you were tech concerned about picking up or he's one of your favorite characters, then you know, you may not have too much to worry about this guy, but he is the next banner coming up. Following him, we will have the Sand Day banner, which will return not only the Tech Gogeta here and the Int Majin Vegeta from last year's Saiyan Day, but will also return last year's Tanabata unit, the LR Vegeta and Trunks. So, a summon you're doing on here, on the two banners here, for, to try to pick up Gohan or Cell, whichever one you're trying to go for, is one less summon you can do on here to try to get Vegeta and Trunks if you didn't have them. Um, Majin Vegeta might be a plus if you were to pick them up, but uh, he's not exactly the best of the 200% leaders, although I do like him. Um, so you'd be missing out on a possible summon for Vegeta and Trunks. Following him, we know that we are getting the Dokkan Festival Yamcha. Now, while the side banner units aren't too much to brag about, although Genya is pretty awesome and I do like the ROF Blues, Yamcha himself and Yajirobe are pretty amazing. So again, any summon you do here for these two um, on their banners is one less summon you could do there if you were planning on summoning for Yamcha. Now, after Yamcha, you've got no idea what's coming until the 8th anniversary. And at first and foremost, as we've been going over every single month uh, since the units have been revealed, you should be saving for these banners, all of your stones, every last one of them, um, because any summons you do not on these banners is one less summon you can do on these banners, which is not the best thing you want, right? If you guys have seen my initial summon video for just the GT, you saw that I went a full 1,000 stones and didn't pull a single copy. So you don't want to be rolling into the anniversary not prepared. So I would take into consideration that, um, if you are free to play and you are saving stones, then maybe summoning for them isn't the best thing 
for you, right? You should probably be saving for this, right? Because look, these banners, they have the um, Vegito and the Gogeta on them who are getting their easy A. They obviously have the 8th anniversary LRs. They have the 7-year LRs, who if you didn't have, you should be saving for, or at least trying to get some dupes of them. They are really good with dupes in them. It has the Gamma 1s and the Gamma 2s, and then the Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Vegeta banner has the LR cooler. So, realistically, this is where your stone should be going, not for these guys here. As good as they are, your stones are better spent at the 8th anniversary. Now, if you are pay to play and stones are no issue, then go for it, right? Who knows when these guys will show up again? Dokkan has a habit of once a unit easy A's, never showing them up again, safe for like once a year or like the Tanabata banner or something. It's it may be a while before we see Gohan and Cell ever come back. So if you are pay to play, then I'd say it couldn't hurt to try again for them. Um, simply because if you don't have them, you really are missing out. Um, but if you're free to play, you should steer very, very clear of this banner. Like there's absolutely no reason you should touch it. As good as these guys are, your stones are better spent here on the 8th anniversary banner so i just wanted to give you guys that little heads up um on my thoughts on whether or not you should summon for the banners because i know many of you guys have been asking me in the comments of the couple recent videos and i wanted to make sure that you know you guys uh you guys were able to hear from me and get your questions answered so anyways guys that's the video um if you like the video if you like my recommendations make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already and in the comments down below let me know what are your gohan and cell sitting at right um if you do have them you know how many dupes you got in them would love to hear that if you don't have them what are you planning to do? Are you going to coin them? Are you going to try to summon? Or are you just going to keep saving those hard-earned stones? Would love to hear your plan in the comments down below. Otherwise, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and aloha.